Hey everybody, this is Victor. I am here with Chris. We're talking about his real estate journey and how Chris went from uh, a failed deal, a failed deal to now working on two flips at the same time. How you doing? How's it going guys? I'm glad uh, you could join. I'm, you know, I'm excited to talk to you. Just talk through your journey, talk through your story. You've made, you know, really, really good progress. And it's been like two weeks that we've been working together. So I'm just really excited to, to be moving forward um, yeah. as we jump into it. So where are you based out of? All right. So I'm, I live in Newburgh, New York, which is Orange County, the Hudson Valley, which is about 60 miles north of New York City. Mm -hmm. um, everybody from New York City is moving up here to the point where houses are being sold, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 dollars what they're, you know, over what their appraisals are. Mm -hmm. And people are just paying it separately cash like they're just flocking from the city up here and it's not the first time it's happened so the, the market up here is is pretty crazy right now okay so you're in new york but you're doing deals uh elsewhere right so you're not doing deals in new york no no it's it's too hard um unless you're doing the work yourself and you're paying a little bit over asking price it, it, it's it's not something i can handle here i have a full-time job i'm uh, uh you know i'm not ready to quit yet hopefully <laughs> Hopefully I can in one day, but right now I'm a, I'm a finance manager at a car dealership. So I don't have the ability to do any of the work myself. So I have to contract everything out. So the houses are literally the, you know, they're being sold two, three days after listing over asking price and contractors and builders are paying a little bit more than I'm willing to pay. Cause I, you know, I don't have, I can't save 15, $20,000 in labor by doing things on my own. So Mm -hmm. I've looked at other avenues. I started in Jacksonville, Florida, because I have some family down there. Okay. Uh, I bought a property. Well, I was under contract for a property, did the homeowner's inspection. It came back with termites. Uh, the numbers just weren't going to work. So I backed out of that deal. But um, I, where did, uh, did you saw me on one of those groups? Where, where, where did we meet? I can't remember, actually. It was something like that. Yeah. So we kept connected on one of those Facebook groups and it was right then you were going through that property with the Jacksonville, Correct. like you had under contract, um, you were in the middle of inspection or just came back and I was helping analyze the numbers a little bit. And right off the bat, it's like, it wasn't a great neighborhood in Jacksonville. So yeah. I was not as confident. I know we discussed that, like the ARV, like I wasn't sure you had a realtor who was saying like, Oh, we can get 140. And I was saying, you know, I don't know, 100, 110, maybe. Yeah. He actually told me 150. And that was a concern that I had because I had told you the same thing. I was like, I think the moon for the house was like 115 and it probably wasn't even 115 mm -hmm. and uh, it needed way too much in repair. So I had to back out. I got my deposit back, so it didn't cost me anything, but the $500, you know, appraisal, but that was it. There were the inspection, yeah. but that's not a big deal. Well, it's good you got the inspection. I think some of the best deals you do are the deals you never do. So I would have hate for you to get into that. And that's like your, your first flip here, uh, what you're trying to get into. And uh, like you lose money. I'd hate for that to happen. Like your first yeah. flip, you should be profitable for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, in a two week process, you know, you kind of showed me the ropes and uh, I dug into the, the, the fa I can't speak enough to the Facebook groups. If you're going to pick a market somewhere, just go on your Facebook and pick out and just make it up. Just like, you know, I chose Jacksonville. So I did Jacksonville, you know, off market properties, Jacksonville property wholesalers. I was just creating these things and they were finding me these private pages and I've met a hundred wholesalers. I have another, another one. Actually, I want to go over like off camera. I want to go over another one with you. Yeah. Um, maybe you can find somebody or maybe you'd be interested in it or, you know, sending it to somebody else. But uh, supposedly there's a pretty good one in my inbox now. But uh, a lot of it was crap and I sifted through it. And you just have to be straight with the guys. Just like, listen, don't give me any burns. I don't want any, I don't want any, uh, you know, hold properties. I got to be, you know, at least 20K above selling price plus estimated cost to ARV. And some of them still keep selling, you know, sending you crap. Weed through those people and then you'll, you know, hopefully you'll find some good people. Mm -hmm. And so far I found two. So one in Jacksonville and actually one in Charleroi, Pennsylvania that I'm hopefully going to close on both by before the end of the month. So you got these two going and that's spot on with the Facebook groups. Like you connect with other people and especially with the wholesalers, that's what I've found where like you get 10 wholesalers and like half of them will just send you crap. 
and then maybe three of them can get you a deal a year. And one of them can get you like a deal a quarter. And the other one can get you a deal a month. So you do really have to sift through all those wholesalers and wholesalers aren't created equal. So you got to just work and there's no other way around it. But you just got to grind through it, run the numbers. And as soon as it makes sense, then you build a good relationship. Yeah. Another good thing is, is that, you know, one, the, the wholesaler that I'm buying the property from Jacksonville, uh, he actually put me with, with a, a, a contractor. And that contractor, I mean, I'm going to negotiate the price with them in the next day or two, but it's, they're going to be able to have plugs for you down there or wherever you're going to help you with things that you need to do. So I didn't have to go to the yellow pages and look up eight different people. I'm using the guy, I'm going probably going to use the guy that he uses for all his stuff. So if he's a wholesaler and he's doing a lot of deals and he uses this guy, chances are he's probably pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to go from there and, and hopefully use him and not and, and eliminate some of the legwork. But it's, it's good to build relationships. And you can, listen, man, I'm in the car business. I can tell when somebody's lying to my face and when they're, you know, when they're telling me the truth, that's my job. I do it every day. So it actually hasn't been that difficult for me to, to recognize the crap and recognize somebody with potential or somebody that's going to give me something. So it's been, uh, it's been really good. I went from not being able to find one deal for two years up here where I live. I just found two in a month that should both be pretty decently profitable. I mean, as you mentioned too, like you're working full time, so this is off hours, your days yeah. off, so on and so forth. I'd love to, you know, if you're comfortable with that, I'd love to talk like specific numbers for like each yeah. deal. Yep. Like what are you buying in that? What do you think repairs are going to be? What do you think you'd sell it for? All right. So the Jacksonville property is 1,811 square feet. Um, we're going to purchase that for 153. Uh, the estimated repair, well, it depends. It, it's going to be in between, in between 25 and 35 K, depending on if we have to do a kitchen or not with okay. one bathroom. Um, the ARV on the house is probably you and I were, I don't want to say at odds about it, but we were, we couldn't really decide if it's going to be 230 or two or two third, uh, 220 or 230 for the ARV. So I'm hoping for the $25,000 repair and the $230, $230,000 ARV, but We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. so that's a good one. I think that's like 31 K net on that one. Yeah. Um, and then you have one in Pennsylvania as well. What were the rough numbers on that one? So the numbers there is I'm going to be purchasing for 49,000. Um, the, re the, the repair should no be no more than 25 K. I'm looking at the lower end of 20. I'm hoping to keep it at around 19, but realistically I'll probably be at about 25. And uh, the ARV on that is about a hundred, 110, maybe. Cause some other things just got lit. Remember we were discussing, well, to keep running the numbers, like as you go, because new things get listed, new things get sold. Now, you know, it's looking like 110, maybe might not be out of the realm. So. Oh, that's maybe good. They, yeah. Maybe listed at 115, hopefully get 110. Yeah. Well, you never know. I mean, so right now the market's hot, so that's a positive. And then just like we discussed, so you got to run comps twice. So when you buy it and then right before you're going to sell it, you got to run it again. Cause I've run in those situations. Like you run comps again. You're like, Oh shoot. Like I can list this for more. Yeah. It makes a difference. I don't sleep Victor. So I run comps like <laughs> every other day while I'm at work. Well, I have a minute just cause it's the only thing I'm kind of thinking of right now. So mm -hmm. I like to keep that pretty updated, but yeah, one, once when you buy it, once when you sell, it makes sense, but I'm just, there's a, I got a mental issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. So that's really helpful. And then, any other insights, like as you're going through this process the first time, like or as you're going through this flipping process? Um, I mean, I have a little bit of experience already. Uh, I didn't have to go out and find a deal my first flip because it was my father's house. So I flipped that, did a lot of the work myself. So I kind of got a little bit of an idea that way. I was a silent partner on another deal, no paperwork involved. Uh, I had nothing to do with the repairs. I put up some money and I got some money back. Um, so I was a little bit, I, I hit the floor running when, when we met because I kind of already had a little experience. Mm -hmm. um, my, like my advice to anybody that's doing their first one is just take your time, you know, cause that's one thing I usually have a problem no matter what it is in my life. I like to go a hundred miles an hour. Victor suggested I not do two deals at one time and, uh, I've listened to Victor on every other aspect of everything that I'm doing, except, except that. that. That's, <laughs> that's the only, cause I, I, I think I have the confidence in myself that I'm going to be able to get it done. So I'm a go getter. I'm a, I'm a get her done kind of do kind of dude. So just take your time, take your time slow, make sure the numbers are correct. And, uh, you know, talk to Victor.
There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's good advice. And yeah, for, for your setup, you have a little more experience. So two at a time is fine. I just don't want you to get overwhelmed. And then yeah. the other thing with two at a time is you don't want to duplicate your mistakes. So if you make a mistake on the first one, you haven't had a chance to learn from it yet. You may make the same mistake on two or twice. Yeah. Understood. I, I speak from experience on that one because I bought like three properties back November, 2019. Like I made the same mistake on each one. Like yeah. I was low for a specific part of the renovation costs. So I messed me up. Um, but you know, you learn. So that's, that's part of the process. Um, okay. Well, that's okay. That's great news. Great progress. It's been, yeah, two, three weeks. You're still working full time. I'm hoping these properties close, you know, smoothly, good to go. Um, and then you're off to the races, getting renovations done and getting it listed ASAP. Um, and then with that in mind, would you recommend others work with me? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's been invaluable, uh, information. It's been a lot of help. And I annoy Victor sometimes just as, again, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm always, my mind's always turned. I'm always trying to figure something out and get it done. So definitely work with Victor because sometimes I'm a pain in the ass and he doesn't, he doesn't tell me, but I know he thinks it sometimes. I don't know about that. You're, you're persistent, which is a good trait. Like you follow up, you're persistent and that's what you need. You know, even if we're talking daily, like that's good. Cause I know, I know where you're at. I know you're on track. Yeah. Uh, so that's awesome. So that's fantastic. So I see yeah, it as a pers positive. Persistence is definitely a, you know, yeah. other than take your time. That's, that's my second piece of advice. Just don't let up. People are slow, man. You know, people mm -hmm. just don't, they work at their own pace unless you kick them in the ass. So just mm -hmm. get it, get it done. That's the truth. That's the truth. Okay. And then why should someone listening uh, take action now? Cause I'm not the type of person that may like when I'm spending money on something, cause I'll, I'll be honest. It's so like any of these types of things where sign up for my course, sign up for my course, sign up for my course. So I'm going to teach them. I usually think they're crap. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really put much stock in that. Um, but I did need somewhat of a mentor doing what I'm doing. I felt more comfortable that way. So I kind of reverted from my normal train of thought and the way I do things. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And it was a big purchase. You know, I'm like, all right, just get it done, pay the money and see where it goes. And the worst case scenario is, you know, you only pay it once, you know, and if you get, if you, if you're profitable on your first flip, you just kind of put it into the cost of that. You didn't really spend any money. It's just the cost of doing business. And then moving forward, you don't have that cost. Perfect. You well, know? Sounds good. Exactly. No, that's, that's spot on. That's how I see it too. I mean, where else are you going to spend that money? Like where else can you get that ROI? Um, it's, it's pretty limited with regards to that. Yeah. And um, if you're not as experienced as I am with like certain thing, not, not saying that I'm some professional or something, but if you make them, you could make a $10,000 mistake doing your flip. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So with that's something that you could potentially save somebody from doing. So, yeah. you know, you, you might, you might make out on the deal and you don't even know because Victor mm -hmm. guided you through what you were doing. You didn't make a $10,000 mistake and it paid for itself. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, the biggest thing, like learn from my mistakes. I've made a ton of those mistakes. You know, you make one little error or you mess up the negotiation, like you lose four grand. That's happened to me a ton. Or, yeah. Or, you know, you do you over renovate the property. It's like an extra 10 grand. So it's so easy, especially with real estate to lose money um, pretty quick, like really quick. Now to cut you off, but that you, you just touched on something that's, that's the third piece of, uh, you know, advice I'm going to give. Know your market, talk to your contractors talk to your wholesalers the way i would renovate a house in the hudson valley new york is not the same way i'm going to renovate a house in charleroi mm -hmm. Podunk, pennsylvania i'm thinking i'm always thinking granite hardwood floor like no i'm not doing granite i'm not doing hardwood floors i'm doing laminate floors and i'm probably going to do i haven't even decided what i'm going to do as a countertop if i have to do one but i'm not using you know 40 dollar a square foot you know uh countertops you, you don't need to uh, mm -hmm. you have to look where the house is. Yep. The other thing I did was, is I looked at other renovated houses on Zillow in that area. And I looked to see what their renovated houses were. Their fully renovated houses were. Some of them still have carpet in it. I'm not, I'm not going to do carpet just cause I wouldn't, but people are saying their houses are fully renovated, getting full price for them. And there's some carpeting in there. There's, you know, white appliances. Like who has you, if you did that where I live, you're never selling your house. You might as well move into it. 
because nobody's buying a house with white appliances. Nobody's buying a house with carpet in the, in the living room, in the dining room. They're just not. If it's not hardwood floors and stainless steel or the, the new matted black stuff that they came out with, which is really nice, you're not selling your house. It's just not going to happen. But if you do that, so in Charleroi, Pennsylvania, like you just said, you are going to over-renovate the house and cost yourself a profit. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, a, yeah. that's a big challenge. That's spot on, like knowing your market and then like knowing what's selling in the area. So I've gone through that recently. Like I have a property uh, here in Gainesville where everything around it comps were laminate countertops. And then we were thinking like, oh, what if we do granite countertops? But it's like, no, everything else that's selling around it is this, this level. So yeah. no need to spend the extra no. money. Yeah. No, not at all. Because you're going to get, you're still going to get, you know, your ARV, hopefully, or your, you know, your asking price, hopefully you just have to make it comparable. Not everything has to be, you know, you know, a half a million dollar mansion. You know, you're buying an 18, uh, an 1800 square foot house, which actually for that area is pretty big, but it doesn't have to be a house that I would renovate like out here, you know, it just doesn't. Yeah. Very cool. Well, any final insights, any final thoughts as we wrap up? And I, again, I do appreciate you taking the time to share your story and share your progress so far. No, I just wish everybody luck. Uh, you know, let's, uh, Let's get it done. Cool. Appreciate it. Well, thanks again for taking the time. Appreciate it. And thanks for everyone for tuning in. Victor, thank you.